the purpose of this video is to demonstrate synchronizing of carburetors and timing on Chrysler and Force 3, 4, and 5 cylinder engines. This particular engine is not complete. It has been partially set up, but it is not ready for use on a boat. However, we can demonstrate what needs to be done. Now, in order to have these engines run correctly, we must first make sure that we have a starting point. Unless we know where we are, we can't get to where we're going. So the first thing we do is set up the carburetors. Now, we'll pop off the ball link here at the timing tower. We pop it off here at the timing tower rather than here at the cam because there is a danger of bending the cam. Now we just move the cam back out of the way. Now the first thing we do is we loosen this screw and this screw and let the butterflies snap shut fully. Then we retighten these screws. Don't tighten them too much because these clips will bend and uh, then they won't hold properly. You may want to put a regular nut behind them instead of these clips. Okay, now we take the cam and we move it forward until it just touches the roller on the bottom <laughs> carburetor. Now you can see that the scribed line on the cam is tangent to the roller on the carburetor. The roller is on an eccentric screw, and by turning this screw, we can adjust how far in or out the roller is and how it contacts the cam. Now this one happens to be set up correctly, and you can see that all three carburetors are fully closed. So now I will clip the ball back on. <clears throat> Okay, now the next thing to do is to make sure that the carburetors are opening fully. And to do this, we take the tower link and we move it to the wide open throttle position. Now once we do that, we look in the carburetors and we see that since this has already been set up, the butterflies are essentially level. They don't have to be exact. In here, close is good enough. You can see that top one is just slightly off. Okay, so that's set up correctly now. Now, <clears throat> we'll just bring it back into idle. This is the idle stop screw. This screw is used to adjust idle speed in the water. When the engine is idling in the water, in gear, the scribed line on the cam may not necessarily be at the tangent. In fact, most times it won't be. Uh, it will be slightly below, like that. Okay. Now, I'll go over to the five-cylinder engine, where you can see this particular cam has two scribed lines. This engine has been set up for idle speed and you can see where the scribed lines are below tangent with the roller. You can also clearly see the tower shaft and the idle stop screw on this particular engine. And let's see if we you can also see that all three carburetors are opening fully. This particular engine does not have a choke. It has an enrichment valve. And this is the manual override. If the electric doesn't work for whatever reason, you press this black button. This enrichment valve must be mounted on a rubber grommet. Otherwise, vibration will cause it to flutter open and close and give you running problems. Now we'll go back to the three-cylinder and here we have the choke. In this particular engine there's a cutout on the choke retaining strap and the solenoid must be seated down into that cut so that when 
the slug is pulled in by the solenoid, all three butterflies close fully. They can be adjusted here by this rod that connects them. Now we go to timing. Uh, timing on these engines, before you do anything, uh, you need to find top dead center. Uh, on the distributor engines, it's important. On the Presto Light and Mercury Ignition engines, it's not quite as important. So we put a screwdriver in the top plug hole. Top plug is always number one on every one of these engines. And we turn the flywheel until we feel top dead center. You'll feel it will rock a little bit. And there we go. That seems about right. And there we are. This particular engine did not have a block pointer and the decal was missing from the flywheel. So I found top dead center, put a mark on the block, a mark on the flywheel, and then I counted the teeth, divided into 360, and got the number of teeth to make 32 degrees and 36 degrees. And I marked those two particular lines also so I know where to time this engine. Now at top dead center on a distributor engine it is important to have the distributor set correctly. And the distributor pulley must have the curved line matching the curve of the flywheel and the straight line pointing straight in. The belt on the distributor pulley should not be set too tight. Uh, an O10 feeler gauge when pushed in like a finger like this should move this belt about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch before the gauge bends. If you set the belt too tight, the distributor binds up and the engine will either not go into gear or will not come out of gear. It gives you problems. Now, distributor engines do not need any tools to have them timed. <clears throat> You take and remove all three plugs, ground them so that the engine cannot start, <clears throat> put the engine in wide open throttle using the controls, and then <clears throat> jumping either from red to yellow or by using the ignition switch, I I'm sorry, Leave the ignition switch on. This does not have to be jumped. When you turn the ignition switch on, and now with the plugs grounded, you slowly turn the flywheel by hand. Until the top plug sparks. Now we won't see this obviously, but we will pretend. When the top plug sparks, you are at 32 degrees, supposedly. So you rock the flywheel a little bit. You can see how I'm rocking it to, to center exactly where the spark is. And then you press on the distributor belt. Each time you press on the belt, you should get a spark. If the spark is not at 32 degrees, this is the distributor link, and this is used to adjust it. When you turn this screw in and move the two plastic blocks together, it moves the distributor this way and retards the timing. When you move the two plastic blocks apart, it moves the distributor this way and advances the timing. And by the way, if the butterflies don't open fully, the ball link is the adjustment. The important adjustment is the butterflies open fully at wide open throttle. And that is basically how you time these Chrysler engines. Now when we go over here, to the five cylinder with a Presto light ignition, uh, you need to crank it over. And 
This particular engine has a block pointer. It has three marks on the flywheel indicating timing, and it has a zero mark. The center mark is 30 degrees. This mark is 28 degrees, and the mark to the left is 32 degrees. These particular engines need to be timed at 30 degrees running, which translates to 28 degrees at cranking speeds. You put a timing light on the top spark plug wire. You remove all the spark plugs and ground them so the engine cannot start, yet you, you, they must be grounded so you don't damage your CD boxes. And then you crank the engine over. These are self-energizing ignitions, so even though the engine will not start, it, you will get a spark and you will be able to put your timing light here and as the flywheel turns you'll be able to see the marks. Now if it's not at 28 degrees at cranking then this again is the timing adjustment on the tower. Spreading these blocks again moves the trigger into the direction of the flywheel and increases your timing advance. Moving the blocks closer together moves the trigger this way with flywheel rotation and retards timing a little bit. Now, if you're doing timing with this engine running, you need to shut it off, make an adjustment, and then turn it on. This is so close to the flywheel that we don't want to join the nine finger club. Now you can see a couple of other things. I've put a fuel filter at the final outlet before the carburetors. The last thing you want to do with fuel is filter it before it gets burned. And this engine also has a fuel filter, but it's not ready to go. <laughs> Now this is a start solenoid. As I was saying before, if you want to, to crank this engine with the ignition key off, you use a, a starter switch or a jumper wire or whatever from red here, from battery, to the yellow wire. And that will close this solenoid, energize it, energize the starter, and crank the engine. Here we have the same thing red wire to yellow. If you make a mistake and hit red wire to black, you're going to get a beautiful spark because it's a dead short. And that's pretty much what you need to know.